Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the only team from Southern Africa at the 2017 Gabon African Cup of Nations Finals Tournament. The Warriors of Zimbabwe! We are back with another show. Hello there. I'm Charles, CNN Mabika. And yes, uh, once again, it's uh, Charles Mabika Soccer Diaries uh, where we go back, uh, we come forward and further forward. Uh, and uh, thanks so much. Uh, Oh, it's so exciting. It keeps rolling. It keeps rolling. The interaction is just rolling more and more. And uh, yes, uh, the team loves it. Uh, and uh, before we can go any further here, once again, are the platforms uh, that you can keep on interacting. Hello everyone, my name is Knowledge Musona, Warriors captain. Follow all the great stats and stories of Zimbabwean football on Charles Mabika's diaries. It's gonna be on YouTube and on Facebook. Don't miss out, it's gonna be fun. Peace. <music> Right, you know what uh, we will be doing starting from this week. We want to test your knowledge going back into the present and into the future. But don't worry, it won't be difficult. We want to send you on a treasure hunt. We're calling it Zim Treasure Hunt, uh, where we send you back with a treasure hunt. And uh, we will task you to find the treasure answer. But don't worry, like I said, it won't be too difficult and also we are going to make it easy because it's going to be multiple choice. So, here comes the first Zim treasure hunt. The question, the treasure hunt, coming up right now. <music> current Warriors player is nicknamed Manero. Is it A, Knowledge Musona, or B, Teenage Harebe, or C, Tino Kadewere? Mais en tout cas, c'est Memphis qui va aller se présenter face au, à Bonal, le, le portier suisse. Exact, Alex Bonal face à Memphis pour peut-être son premier but depuis le mois de décembre dernier. Memphis, oh, sans, oui. sans laisser aucune chance à Alex Bonal, s'est frappé fort. Les convalescences de Memphis et de Jeff Reno, oh, magnifique le petit pont de Memphis là qui va aller donner un super Allez, ballon. Pour Karl Toko et Kambi qui frappe croisé, ça fait 2-0. Magnifique, et Memphis, Memphis euh, ah, après, après le but, la passe. Thiago, Ceux qui mal. savent quand il faut déconner, quand il faut travailler, bien Allez, fait là. Tino Kadewere dans la surface, la frappe, oh, ça rentre avec l'aide du gardien et du poteau. Ça fait euh, 3-0, le premier but lyonnais de l'ancien Havre. Tino 
Cadet ou Ça fait 3-0. Pas très loin de. local de l'étape. Voilà, exactement. Super, ah, super ballon, de Jeff. ballon là de Jeff Ren, la remise. Carl qui combine avec Memphis et oh, ça va faire 4-0. On va noter hein, parce que sinon. Ah bah c'est fait. Hein. C'est combien 4 4-0. Je t'ai prêté un crayon, un papier, mais apparemment tu. Mais je te laisse si noter. Tu me laisses faire. <rire> ah, le beau contrôle là de Memphis. Qui va travailler face au capitaine Machado. Le centre fort qui voyage dans la surface. Carl Tokwekambi qui remise pour Kadewere qui marque le cinquième but, son deuxième personnel. Ça fait deux doublés, Kadewere, Memphis. Ballon à droite pour Carl Tokwekambi qui fait parler sa vitesse de pointe. Le centre, au oh, deuxième poteau, la volée. Et le triplé pour Tino Kadewere. Très bon travail de Carl Tokwekambi. La finition de l'ancien Havray. Et euh, peut-être songe-t-il à utiliser ce schéma. Memphis qui rentre dans la surface sur son pied gauche, ouais, le centre en fait. retrait. Et quadruplé pour Tino Kadewere. Superbe service de Memphis. Et à la demi-heure de jeu, l'OL porte le score à 7-0. Qui relance avec ses défenseurs. Ouais, bien fait, la carte. de Karl. Ah, il a vu Maxwell, il va le servir. Au deuxième poteau, c'est Memphis. Faire... Oh, c'est dosé, ça rentre. Superbe Memphis. Superbe Karl, surtout au départ, qui a fait la différence en vitesse, l'accélération, la vista. L'axe, le bon pressing, la déviation de. Et là. Allez, Thiago. Oh, le petit piqué somptueux, service ah, de Memphis. Thiago Mendes qui s'est projeté pour le neuvième but. Allez, John Lucas servi par Léo Dubois. Il y a trois courses dans l'axe. Cacré, premier poteau. Et John oui. Lucas qui s'enfonce en retrait pour Léo Dubois qui se retourne. Oh, il a raté son exter, c'est pas fini. Cacré, oui. Le voilà le dixième. Bon travail à droite de John Lucas. Le relais de Léo Dubois et la finition de Maxence Cacré. Et quelques curieux sont derrière les grilles du, ouais. du stade Camille Fourny, Brian. Allez, bon appel encore Allez, Memphis, Memphis. Il est passé devant, faut finir Memphis. Allez, le petit piqué. Oh, la magnifique. frappe forte. Magnifique. Sous la barre, bien joué Memphis. Ça fait 11. 11. Allez, bon appel là de Karl. Allez Karl, ce serait bien que tu marques un, un, un but là, plus. Et voilà, c'est fait. Voilà, son deuxième but perso. Le douzième. Bravo Memphis aussi pour le départ de l'action. Right. Did you manage to get that uh, treasure uh, from the Zim treasure hunt? A question. Well, don't worry. If you fail, or if you have failed, we will give you the answer for the Zim treasure hunt at the end of the show. Yes, uh, it's just uh, to test your knowledge and see how much you love Zimbabwe football. Right, uh, what is our show about uh, this week? Well, the 9th of July every year in Zimbabwe, is a sad day for not only Zimbabwe soccer fans, but uh, the Zimbabwean nation as a whole. Because uh, 20 years ago, on the 9th of July 2000, uh, at the National Sports Stadium, during a game between Zimbabwe Warriors and South Africa's Bafana Bafana uh, for a World Cup qualifier, 13 people, 13 Zimbabweans, uh, tragically lost their lives and one of them was a six-year-old a passionate football supporter who was a warrior supporter through and through called Alec Fidesi. Well it is a sad day and uh, next week uh, is Thursday July 9 and uh, we will be remembering the 13 victims who perished on the 9th of July in 2000. Pandemonium broke after South African striker Delron Buckley had scored a second goal for Bafana Bafana against the Warriors, of course, with only 10 minutes to go. And as Buckley raced off in celebration, he went towards one stand housing uh, the huge Zimbabwean crowd uh, and uh, did this. Teasing the Zimbabwean crowd, uh, uh, saying that uh, Bafana Bafana had come to Zimbabwe to silence uh, the Zimbabwean soccer supporters. That did not go down well with some of the fans in the stadium who started throwing missiles onto the pitch uh, and the game was halted and uh, police uh, fired tear gas in the stadium and uh, then all horror just broke loose because uh, everyone 
panicked, wanting to get out of the stadium to escape the tear gas. And in that ensuing stampede, 13 lives were lost on that day, the 9th of July, 2000. And uh, we have a special guest uh, who was there at the National Sports Stadium uh, to tell us more about what happened and what should we do in the future. So the guest, the guest will be coming up in a couple of moments. <laughs> Welcome back. Well, our special guest is a former Zifa Chief Executive Officer, Jonathan Papa Mashingaide. We call him Papa. That's his nickname. Thank you, um, CNN. The 9th of July is a special day um, in our football folklore in the sense that uh, it's a day that uh, saw Zimbabwe uh, lose uh, some of the units that uh, constitute the 12th player. Uh, it was a day that we lost uh, 13 lives, uh, lives which today uh, could be with us as we support the warriors uh, in their quest for honors in the Continental Jamboree or the World Cup um, uh, Championships. It was a sad day indeed, and I say may their souls rest in peace. Papa, um, ever since that tragedy, Zifa did hold a memorial back in 2006 for the fallen 13 victims. But uh, nothing after that has been done year in, year out. Why do you think that is so? Um, Charlie, uh, I remember in, two, in 2006 when we put together that service to... Uh, remember the 13 lives uh, that we lost on the 9th of um, uh, July. We were driven by the need to bring to the fore the need for us uh, to remain as one family uh, during difficult times, as well as uh, going forward having uh, an annual, uh, an annual uh, day that would uh, commemorate in um, remembrance of those uh, when we lost in 2000. So you then find that um, we, we have uh, leaderships that come and go, and sometimes we lose a track of events uh, along the way. And I, would, I still feel that uh, um, we can uh, re-engage as, as, as a family and make sure that we uh, constitute uh, a team, which team would then uh, run with the project of uh, turning the 9th of July into a special day for Zimbabwean football. I believe that uh, any sane leadership would not say no to such kind of initiatives. And what it takes, obviously, is those who were there around then and those who are in office to sit down and come up with uh, a template ahead of uh, that special day uh, on our calendar. Uh, the whole idea is to ensure that Around the 9th of July, we have uh, a sequel of events that lead up to the 9th of July, events to do with uh, talk shows, events to do with um, road shows, events to do with um, conferencing on uh, um, fair play, stadium control. Uh, going forward, I believe that's the, way to, that's the way to go. We need to have this day as a special day uh, in our calendar. And then all affiliates of Zifa, all members of the female football, would then have to um, uh, remember, not only in this 13, but uh, all the fans that we uh, uh, lost along the way since 1963. But it is uh, obviously incumbent upon the football leadership to create a congenial environment, which environment would uh, allow for families to enjoy the beautiful game of football without fear of losing uh, life or a limb. 
and that is doable uh, given that FIFA and CAF have templates around creating what they term as a family base. So whether it's Mandawa, it's Barberfields, it's uh, uh, Wange, it's Rufaro Stadium, National Sports Stadium, the whole idea is now um, working towards having those family base where uh, the fans can um, troop in, watch the game, troop out with no instinct at all. And uh, it is also incumbent upon the clubs, uh, because remember the clubs are the ones that constitute the building blocks of football. The clubs should, uh, through their uh, marshals or through their security units, ensure that uh, there is zero tolerance uh, to crowd violence. <laughs>
that's just about it and uh, it's always so exciting uh, because uh, we love to hear from you from wherever you are all over the world uh, and uh, yes uh, remember to take care of your loved ones and each other until we meet again i'm charles cnn mabika and it's bye bye for now